Hi, and welcome to question three of the 2022 Junior Cert Higher Level Maths. So if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, please email shanetroy at gmail.com and like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. So question three is coordinate geometry. So let's read through it. The coordinate diagram below shows part of the N22 road in County Cork. Two points on the road P and Q are marked on the diagram. So we have the map here now. It's, it's probably it's stretched for just the PowerPoint. So these, as long as they're on the same axis, that they're the same width apart, there's no problem with them being stretched. It just might look kind of askew. Um, so you see here that this point P is, in relation to the origin, it's negative one on the X and plus three on the Y. So part A is saying the point Q, okay, has coordinates six, two. Okay, so that's six on the X, two on the Y. Uh, right down the corner of the point P. So we said there was minus one on the X and then plus three on the Y. So that's that. Now A and B are marked together here. So there were 10 marks. So that's probably have the seven right there. One part correct you usually gets the high partial. Just depends on the scheme. The equation of the line PQ is, they tell me X plus seven Y equals 20. Now, I don't like the equation of the line given in this format. I prefer when you compare it to the format y is equal to mx plus c. Now, that's not necessarily important for this question, but no harm. Um, so it's not in that format at present. To get in that format, we need to have the y on one side, everything else on the far side. So I'm going to get rid of the x there by taking it away. Do it to one side, have to do it to both. So you end up then with 7y is equal to 20 minus x. Now, if I want, I don't want 7 times y. Now I'm just going to try then, I suppose, manipulate this. And I want y equals everything else. So I'm going to divide that by 7, okay? If I do it once, I have to do it to everything, okay? Now they cancel, 7 by divided by 7 is 1. So y is equal to, now we generally have the x first. So that's minus x over 7 plus 20 over 7. Now that's telling me that on this equation of the line, PQ, it's crossing a 20 over 7. Now that's roughly here. Now 20 over 7 is, uh, it's not quite 3. It's like 3.9 or, so, or 2.9, which is almost 3. And it has a slope of, now the number there is minus, you could express that if I have space here. Minus x over 7 could be expressed as minus 1 over 7 times x. So the slope of that line, it's going down, okay? It's going down 1 for every 7 it goes across, okay? Now, that's not really what they're asking here, but just no harm being versed in that. What they are asking here, let me just clear off the ink off this screen, is... The equation of the line PQ is this. Using this or otherwise, find the coordinates of the point where the line PQ crosses the y-axis. Now, the second I see that, my brain always, and this is a very important thing with coordinate geometry, all along the y-axis, the value of x is zero. So all along this line here, it's like 0, 5, 0, 4, 0, 3, 0, 2, etc. Okay? So it's a fundamental thing. All along the y-axis, x is zero. Now, I can use that fact. So if I write out the equation of the line, k is equal to 20. Well, if x is 0 at the y-axis, so it's gone away. So you end up with 7y equals 20. Now, we want to get rid of the 7, so I'm going to divide it by, its, by the 7. Do one side has to do it to both. You end up with y is equal to 20 over 7. They don't seem to say if they want it in decimal. So my coordinates there are 0 on the x, 20 over 7 on the y, which is basically this point. Okay, you can probably read it off, okay, um, but you want to be, I suppose, within the accuracy. And the notes, that's just the answer there, and I've tried to show that calculation for the substitution of the value of 0 in for x, just on the side here. Okay, so part C now, <clears throat> it's only worth 5 marks, but still 5 marks. A new road is being built through the points uh, 6, 2. Okay, so through Q. 
Now I put in this diagram, it's not given on the actual the exam paper service, but it'll be on the, the, the previous page probably. On the quarter geometry diagram, it will be a straight line segment, which is perpendicular to PQ. So perpendicular means it crosses at a right angle. Okay, now I'm gonna try to draw this freehand, but that's terrible. Right, let's just make a massive line through it. Okay, just try to cover up the fact that I can't draw. Um, but that creates a perpendicular line. Now, there is a simple way of finding the perpendicular slope, and we already found the slope, okay, a second ago. We said that the slope was minus one over seven. Okay, now I could find that by using rise over run, okay? So it's going down, so it's negative, goes down one, first going across seven, okay? But there's also, you could use the equation of the line and they gave me the equation of the line on the previous page, and we simplified that to give me the slope. We rearranged it just earlier to y is equal to mx plus c, a different way of approaching it. Either way, once you have the slope, you can use this formula here to find the perpendicular slope. Okay. Now, it depends on, I'll show you the faster way of doing that in a second. So some slope multiplied by negative one over seven is equal to minus one. So this is our unknown. Now, you could just, I suppose, take a simple view of this and go, if I want to get rid of the minus one over seven, I could divide by minus one over seven. Do it to one side, I have to do it to both. That's a calculation, they'll cancel, okay? And you're left with um, m is equal to now minus one, let me do it by hand. That's the same thing as minus one over one divided by minus one over seven. To divide fractions, you take the bottom fraction, turn it upside down and change the sign, okay? So if you don't change the sign, I'm getting mixed up. Um, so once you've turned it upside down, you multiply top by top, so minus one by minus seven is plus seven, bottom by bottom, one by one is one. Now seven over one is the same thing as seven. So my perpendicular slope is equal to seven. Now a simpler way of doing that, and what is often, I suppose the way I would have taught in the past, I teach both ways, but to find the perpendicular slope, you turn it upside down and change the sign. Now again, plus seven over one is the same thing as seven. So that's a real quick way of doing it, but this is the more mathematical way of doing it. There's no right or wrong, it's just whatever you prefer to do. Okay, so that's part C. Um, and that's the answer here. Actually, I'm not finished, am I? Okay, I should read the question properly. Work out the equation of this new road. Give your answer in the form of ax plus by plus c equals zero. So you can see down here the equation of a line, one form of it is y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So they give me the point on the on the new perpendicular line of six two. Okay, that's the that's it's going through q, so the q is on the line. I worked out the slope, okay, already, is, is seven. So all I do is substitute the y value instead of y1, the seven instead of the slope, the m value, and then six instead of the x1. Now once I've that done, I'm gonna go left to right, remove the brackets, okay, so I got y minus two is equal to seven x, take away 42. And then um, in essence, I want to bring both of these across. So I can get rid of the y here by taking y away from it. If I do it one side, I have to do it to both. I can get rid of the two by adding two to it. Do it to one side, I have to do it to both. They're gonna cancel, you're left with nothing. Seven X minus Y, now minus 42 plus two is minus 40. They want the answer in that format. Now, personally, I don't like this format. I think it's more useful in the format Y equals MX plus C, because from that, you can tell what the slope is and I can personally visualize it. The C value tells you, um, or in the in the y is equal to mx plus c value, mx plus c. The m tells you the slope. The c tells you the y-intercept. So I can visualize what the line will look like when it's in that format. Whereas in this format, I just I struggle to I have to I have to convert it to this format to do it, which seems less useful to me. But I am from an engineering and science background, like less of a mathematical background. Okay, so that's part C. Now part D here, it says the distance PQ on the diagram is 7.1. So let's reflect on that. 
the distance here is 7.1. I'm sure you can calculate it if you wanted to using the distance formula, but that's that distance. Um, and then it says five millimeters. Let me write this down, that's a conversion. Five millimeters is equal to 100 meters. So that's the scale. Now, the second I see this, I go, look, that's not really useful to me. I want to know what one millimeter equals. And the simple way to convert this statement into one is to divide it by five. Do it once, I'd have to do it to both. So one millimeter is equal to 20 meters. Now, they tell me the distance PQ is 7.1 centimeters. If I convert that to millimeters, I'm going to multiply it by 10. So that's 71 millimeters. So if one millimeter equals 20 meters, well, what's a 71 millimeters equal? So I'm just multiplying both sides by 71. So one by 71 is just 71. And 20 by 71 is, should be on the next page, is 1240 meters. Okay. Now, that's the answer, except they give me this little caveat here at the end. They want that in kilometers. So I can divide it by 1,000. 1420 divided by 1,000 is the same thing as 1.42 kilometers. And that's the answer. So conversions are tricky. Well, before I, I suppose I developed the strategy I apply, employ most times now, I'd be kind of going, do I multiply, do I divide, and trying it both ways, and it wasn't an effective strategy in my opinion. What I always do now is I go, I write the statement out, and I apply the algebra rules. Like, I don't want five millimeters. That's not really useful to me. So I want one millimeter. So how do you calculate that? Well, I divide by five. Okay, if I do it one side, following algebra rules, I should do it to both sides. And then I get a much more useful statement. Now, they do make it hard on me because they I have to remember that my units here are not in millimeters, so I need to convert that. Okay, that's just multiplying by 10. And once I know that, I can apply that new information to my conversion factor, get my answer, and then leave the answer in the format that they want. So I think that's the end of question three. So um, as always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. Um, please like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. And see you on question four.